Okay, hi, <clears throat> this is Paul Andrews from Shingy Academy and today we've got a something a little bit different for you because Graham Cave of Tiger's Den Swords, um, he makes uh, great wooden sparring training swords for Chinese swordsmanship and he has sent me a load of Dao, uh, four different sabers and um, we've got a bit of an arrangement, me and Graham now, in when he makes a new prototype he sends me them to test, I do a little bit of review, give him some feedback, he tweaks it and then he puts them into production. So these are some prototypes that Graham's been making. Um, there are two different types of dowel, two, two different sizes and I'm just going to run through a little bit of a test, a little bit of a re review. Um, I've already given Graham his feedback, he's tweaked his, his design and they're already uh, ready to order so if you are interested in ordering them head over to Tiger's Den Swords and um, we'll put a link in the description below. Okay so Joe's gonna just zoom in a little bit and <laughs> give you a give you a quick look at these swords. Uh, just for comparison I've got a couple of other swords here as well. So this one is your bog standard Martial arts shop, New Way Dao, oxtail saber, Chinese style. It's made of oak. It's pretty lightweight and flimsy. I've smashed about five or six of these in the past. And in terms of a sparring sword, it's fairly short. It's quite sharp at the tip, so it's not particularly safe. It's got a very thin cross section here. So again, a lot of force can be presented on that little tip as it hits someone in the head or their arm so it can be a little bit unsafe there as well. They are flimsy, they break dead easy which again is not good for safety because if you break this and the splintered edge it can go in and puncture into you. The guard is really thin, it's wobbling, it's not very strong, I've smashed a couple of those as well and it is very very lightweight. I'm guessing this is under 500 grams, half a kilogram. Um, it's very easy to move, it feels nice to move, but it's just not realistic in terms of historical weapons or in terms of something you want to be using for sparring. Um, I would always suggest using something a little bit more robust than this. So this is where we come on to Graham swords. So Graham bases all of his swords on historical swords. He has a collection of antiques and he uses them as reference. He also has a lot of contacts in uh, Chinese antiques fields. He talks with my sword teacher, Scott Rodell as well, who has a vast collection of antiques. And he uses those uh, specs from antique swords in order to make something that's more historically accurate. So here we've got two different types of sword. We've got, we've got a saber that's got a fairly straight edge on the back with a little upturn at the top. Okay, so this kind of saber is called a Yan Mao Dao, which means goose quill saber. So rather than murder the Chinese language, I'm just going to call this a goose quill from now on. Okay, and if you look at the bottom, the guard is straight, and this is a horse hoof type pommel, but it's fairly angular, so there are different types of uh, typologies. Um, if you want to learn a bit more about that, then I suggest you have a look at a page on Peter Decker's website, mandarinmansion.com. He has a, uh, a little guide to Chinese sabre typology. So the closest style that this is uh, closest to would be called fang shi, which means angular style. So you see everything's fairly straight and angular, okay? So that's a goose quill saber with angular style fittings, yeah? Then we've got this saber. Now you see this starts to curve quite early and continues to curve all the way to the top, okay? So this is a Liue Dao. So this is a willow leaf saber and again rather than murder the Chinese language continuously I'm just going to call this a willow leaf and then if we 
have a look at the bottom. This time we've got a curved fitting and again the horse hoof type pommel but again it's, it's a little bit more rounded so this is the rounded style. I have to admit I can't remember what that's called. I think it's uh, Yuan Shu. Yeah, Yuan Shu is rounded style. So again, I'm just going to refer to that as rounded. And that is the willow leaf. So we've got two styles here. I'll show them together. The one at the bottom is the um, goose quill, and the one at the top is the willow leaf. So, what's the difference between them? How do they feel? Okay, so. Both of them are already, I can feel that they're heavier than the, the bog standard kind of martial arts shop saber. So I'm guessing that these are probably around about 700 grams ish. I haven't weighed them, so I can't give you exact weights on them. We are going to measure them in for length and so on in a minute, but um, I can't really tell you the exact weights. Now, how do they feel in the hand? They feel really nice, they move really nice, okay? The good kind of balance on them both. These are the shorter ones, so I've got two short ones and two long ones here. So the short ones feel really nice, able to control, good weight to them, can move them really freely. I'm just gonna switch hands so that I've got the, the goose quill in my right hand, my dominant hand. So it feels nice, it moves nice. Now, one reason for the different types of fitting, the different styles. So well, let's just get into a little bit of history. This is history corner time now. The uh, goose quill, slightly earlier, comes in at the end of the Ming Dynasty, continues through uh, the early to mid part of the Qing Dynasty. So we're talking the mid 1600s into the 1700s, mid 1700s. Um, the style, the angular style, is good for solid cutting, nice and solid in the hand. However, it does have a few drawbacks in comparison to the curved saber. So, the curved saber, the um, willow leaf, you notice the, the, the rounded style, the, the curved hilt here. Now this came in, again, uh, early Qing Dynasty, and then towards the middle of the, uh, the 18th century and into the 19th century, these became commonplace throughout all of the Chinese military. And one of the reasons is, if I try to stab, well, I've got a curve here. Now you see the, the, this is hard to get under my wrist. So my wrist is having to bend here in order to get the point on target. So if I was stabbing towards a tree, this is actually gonna be a, a, analogous to stabbing someone else. So the curved tip, if I hit like this, the curved tip can roll up, okay? But I want that to go in. So what I have to do is with the curved tip, I need to point this down slightly. Now as I point this down slightly, the pommel's coming up and I'm having to really bend my wrist in order to point the tip down and, and make a nice stabbing action to get the tip into my enemy. Now, if I have, this innovation, this rounded hilt, now I can tilt my wrist more before the pommel starts to hit my arm and twist my wrist out, which means that the, the curve can be bigger here because I can point this down more. And also it means that I can get the tip on target easier for a thrust, okay? The curve itself helps you to cut so the curvature, when I cut into something, draws through and cuts deeper as it goes through. Whereas a straighter sword, if I hack into something, now I have to pull it through and make the curve myself. Whereas the curved sword helps to cut through here. You'll also find this, that the curved swords are used more from horseback and you get bigger curves. And this is so that you can cut down the side of your horse's flank without actually hitting the horse, okay? So sabers were the mainstay of the Chinese army. The goose quill and the willow leaf were their um, military issue sabers, unlike the oxtail. So oxtail is a much um, later 
period sword, usually used by civilians, martial artists, rebels, um, uprisers, and it was not really that common as a military issue sword, if at all. So um, these kind of typologies are what the Chinese army are using. And um, this kind of length, so we're, gonna, we're just gonna measure these very quickly. I'm gonna get my handy hyper tough tape measure out. So both about the same length and from the pommel to the tip we're looking at around 74 centimeters so that's 29 inches okay and the blade we always measure the blade from the base of the guard okay not from the top but from the base so on here they're both around 59 centimeters 23 inches okay so let's just have a look at the point of balance. So we're looking at da, 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 around about the base of the fuller there. So the fuller is this groove that goes along the blade. So usually we, we, we measure that from, again, from the base of the the guard so looking at about six inches just over six inches or 16 centimeters down the blade there so that, that's nice that's nice it doesn't feel tip heavy it doesn't feel too light in the hand i can cut out quick cut through it's really nice some of the good features i like on this graham's machining the fullers, always nice, really nice and straight, really even the whole way around. And this little feature is great. He's got this kind of like scalloped edge on the back here. Some of the period swords would have a sharpened back edge that allows you to get a nice sharp tip. Of course, because this is a sparring sword, he's filed that end off. Okay, so this is great. You see here, nice wide front section spreads the strike the force of the strike so if you're sparring and you're hitting somebody you're less likely to break a bone um, still advise anybody who's going to do some sparring with these especially proper full contact heavy sparring you will need to wear protective equipment okay you do so at your own risk don't break yourself and then say paul told me to do it because i didn't okay the guards i got a peg going through there on these shorter ones it's a solid piece of hickory the sword itself is completely hickory it's pegged in it's nice and thick they're really solid one thing that i did previously with this is that just i'm really giving that quite a big whack it's not even budging there's no cracks there's no dents it's really solid okay these are not oiled you want to oil them with tongue oil, linseed oil, or some other wood oil. Um, I've just been using them unoiled to test them, but I will be oiling them, okay? The grips, at first I thought that these felt a little bit thin in the hand. So uh, I prefer to actually add a grip wrap. So I'm just gonna show you a grip wrap that's on my Jian. So this is another one of Graham's swords. This is really well used. I've had this for nearly 10 years. Um, this is a uh, cotton grip wrap, but it's so well used, it's really smoothed out. But you see, this is kind of, it gives it a little bit of extra um, width, a little bit extra to hold on to. So I think that with these, I'd probably advise having a grip wrap with them. It costs a little bit extra um, if you're going to buy that from Graham, or you can do it yourself. There are guides online that you can find. Um, it takes a bit of time and a bit of practice, but it's not too difficult. Pommel, really nicely machined. You can see the peg. You can see the, um, the detailing of how Graham's made that from one, two, three, four, five different pieces of wood. So you see the detail that goes into this. It's great. Okay. So they're the shorter versions. Really nice. I really like the, uh, the short goose quill. Feels really good. I have a... Uh, 
antique uh, butterfly sword, a little bit shorter than this, feels very similar in play, in, in action to this sword. So that's a testament to Graham's ability. He's making a wooden sword, which obviously is much thicker than a real metal sword, um, but it feels very similar to what a historical sword would feel like. So I really like this one. Okay, onto the, the bigger versions. So Graham makes these in various different sides, sizes. Um, really nice that he's done longer versions. Usually the longer versions would be used by cavalry, maybe, and infantry would use a shorter version, but that, they were standard sizes. You get variations. Um, what you find is that usually, uh, especially Chinese officers, they had to have these commissioned, and even though there were standards in what uh, the blade should look like and uh, the style, there were always variations because they were handmade by swordsmiths. So you always get a little bit of variation in length, in width, uh, the number of fullers, the length of the fullers, any decorations and fittings. Um, sometimes you get uh, brass or bronze fittings, and other times you get um, iron fittings. Um, so again, the willow leaf has the rounded style with the rounded hilt, which I really like on the uh, on the longer version because it's got a little bit more weight towards the tip because it's longer. So you feel that this is dragging down slightly, but this is fine because it's a cutting sword, it's a cutting saber. You want a little bit of weight in the tip to add to the the cut. But what that means is that as the cut comes round, that pommel can come up into the wrist and it's nice to have that curve, which means that you've got a little bit of extra room in the cut to twist, to snap the wrist a little bit. So that's great. Um, at first I thought that the, the weight did feel a little bit tip heavy, but again, historically, this is, this is fairly correct in terms of um, historical examples, there might be a little bit f more weighted further up the blade in terms of point of balance. Because with, with a saber, you do want that cut to come in, you want the, the end to feel a bit heavier. Now in a oxtail dow, they do this by widening the blade at the tip here. So this is, this is something that, that people were actually thinking about, is that how do we get a bit more weight into the top so we can get a bit more weight into the force of the cut? So feeling like the point of balance is a little bit more further towards the tip, it's not a bad thing. It might be a little bit off-putting for people who are more used to the lighter swords or to Jianfa where the tip is slightly lighter in a GM, in a straight sword. But again, everything's really well made. The only difference really in this is the length and also in the guard. So Graham's laminated the guard here. And he's got five layers of hickory, different grain directions, which makes this stronger. Now, my feedback to him was that maybe five is a little bit overkill. So I think he's actually changed that to three layers. Um, which makes it a little bit quicker and easier for him to make, but it doesn't detract from the, uh, the strength. Again, this is really solid. I've smacked this one a few times um, and it hasn't budged an inch, a millimeter even. It's great. Um, you might see the, the, these, I can't really see. Yeah, just up here. We've already been really hammering these a lot um, just to test them out. We've really smashed them up a bit. Um, and they really handle full contact work, smashing against each other, hitting into the uh, armor, into the uh, into the HEMA style um, fencing mask. Uh, no problem at all. Takes it all. As as I said before, you probably just want to oil them once you've got them. Um, differences in. Hickory. Hickory is a nice light wood, but but you see that sometimes you get a little bit of difference in the grain color. I quite like this. It gives you swords 
a little bit of character and when you put oil on that it really brings out these differences in color it looks really cool um, so that one's the willow leaf again with a curve that goes all the way from the base curves up to the end and this one's the goose quill the straight fitting more straight in the blade curves up at the tip this one again feels really nice it moves really well I prefer with a longer blade to have that rounded fitting because it feels like I want to make bigger cuts and that little rounded fitting in the hilt the rounded twist down really helps the wrist this feels like it's got a little bit more work on the wrist which means that I might not be able to really cut through as easily so it, ma it makes that feel more like I'm hacking rather than cutting but that's just the the nature of this kind of blade you're always going to feel that and that's probably more historically accurate because this allows you to feel like you've got more of a cut coming through okay so overall really amazingly well made really feel nice in the hand move really well nice heavy solid swords safe for sparring or safe as you can get with sparring swords you want to have protection on anyway hilts feel a little bit thin but again graves made these to historical standard he's got historical examples with hilts this thin but then you might want to add a grip wrap just to add that little bit of width and a bit more grip to to it um, machined really nice even like this scalloped edge this this sharpened back edge bit nice flat end so you're not gonna stab yourself or, or get impaled on there overall these are great so whether you want to go for a long one or want to go for one of the shorter versions then I'd really recommend them my class we have just ordered I think seven or eight of these shorter versions of the willow leaf saber and we will be doing a lot more Dao saber work in the years to come for you uh, measurement geeks you historically accurate people that want to know everything here we go so on the longer swords we're looking at a total length of uh, 90 centimeters and that's just over 35 inches okay so from the base of the guard length of the blade we're looking at around 74 centimeters 29 inches okay and then I'm just gonna find that point of balance for you and as I thought it's a little bit above the base of the fuller so it's about an inch or so just past the base of the fuller so we're looking at around about 21 centimeters that's just over eight inches from the base of the guard there okay so that's on the that's on the willow leaf and i am guessing that things are pretty much the same pretty much the same on the willow leaf as well so about there Okay. yeah that's very slightly more tip so we're looking at eight uh, that's 22 centimeters to the point of balance that's about eight and a half inches we're looking at the same length 90 centimeters and 74 centimeters for the blade if you're interested in swords in swordsmanship in in chinese fight sword fighting check out the links below Get onto our Facebook page, UK Chinese Sword Fighting. We uh, we have classes in the Leeds area. We do uh, regular seminars every year, workshops with me and with my teacher, Scott Riddell. And if you want to buy some swords, get over to Graham Cave's website, Tiger's Den Swords. Tell him that Paul sent you from Xingyi Academy. Okay, see you later, guys.